commission finds you guilty as charged and sentences you to death by hanging. Yamashita himself thanked the commission for the fairness of his trial. The images you have just seen depict one of the most powerful generals of the Japanese army, Tomoyuki Yamashita, being sentenced to death by a military tribunal. The decision was highly controversial, and not all judges agreed with it. Despite this, as you can see, the condemned man remained impassive and even thanked his executioners for their good treatment. He was an exceptional man with a strong character. Some considered him a brilliant leader, while others saw him as a soulless monster. Today, in this new episode, we will tell you everything about Tomoyuki Yamashita, the most formidable officer of the Japanese Empire. Tomoyuki Yamashita was born on November 8, 1885 in the town of Osugi, Japan, into a family of moderate economic status. From an early age, he decided to pursue a military career and enrolled in the Imperial Army Academy to begin his journey in the armed forces. His abilities were evident as he graduated in 1905 with one of the highest averages in his class. In the following years, he progressed rapidly through the ranks and by 1916, he already held the rank of captain. At that time, he was 31 years old and had a future as bright as it was tragic ahead of him. After World War I, Yamashita specialized in matters related to Germany, gaining knowledge about the economy, military capabilities, and German political factions. The army assigned him to serve as an assistant at the Japanese embassy in Germany the most important position he had held until then. The mission went smoothly, although our protagonist could not imagine that a storm was approaching. In 1922, he returned to Japan and continued with a successful career, to the point that the government granted him a position within the Ministry of War. His task was to implement a reform within the army to promote discipline and prevent disorder among the troops. By the 1920s, the situation within the Japanese armed forces was extremely tense. It seemed that, if not resolved soon, a fierce civil war would break out and destroy the country. The military was divided into two factions. On one side was the Kodoha group, which sought to impose a fascist military dictatorship and expand through Asia by force, conquering the rest of the continent. On the other side was the Toseha group, much more cautious and conservative. Although it was against democracy, it did not agree with the methods of the Kodoha, whom it considered fanatical and extremist enemies that needed to be exterminated. In this confrontation, Yamashita supported the Kodoha faction, which had fascist ideas. This would turn out to be a serious mistake that would almost cost him his career and life. The factional struggle reached its peak during the so-called February 26 incident, an attempted coup in 1936, our protagonist and his comrades wanted to seize the government and assassinate Emperor Hirohito. It was a terribly risky maneuver because, according to the Japanese Code of Honor, they were committing the greatest of betrayals. If they failed, they could consider themselves dead, as they would not escape the gallows. The rebel troops stormed the streets of Tokyo and headed for the main government buildings with the aim of taking them by force. Let's listen to a snippet of the Insurgents' war song, which, as you will see below, had a furious lyrics. <laughs> Meanwhile, some of Hirohito's trusted men were assassinated. The most notorious case was that of General Jotaro Watanabe, one of the most loyal to the Empire. He was caught at his home and ruthlessly gunned down in front of his wife and daughter. Despite their efforts, the rebels failed to capture the Prime Minister or storm the Emperor's palace. While all this was happening, skirmishes and shootings continued between the military supporting the coup and those defending the government. Finally, realizing that success was impossible, the rebels surrendered. The punishments that followed were brutal, aiming to warn the rest of the army that no more betrayals like this would be tolerated. 
19 conspirators were sentenced to death, and another 40 were sent to prison. It was the end of the Kodoha faction and its plans to install a military dictatorship. Since Yamashita's role in the coup attempt was minor, his life was spared. Our protagonist took the opportunity to plead with Hirohito to show mercy, not only to him but also to the other rebel leaders, and not condemn them to the gallows. The Emperor informed him that he no longer trusted him and banished him to a relatively insignificant military base in Korea. This meant he would retain his position in the armed forces, but would be relegated to an insignificant job for the rest of his days, ensuring he would never again participate in a new insurrection. However, against all odds, this was not the end of our protagonist. Yamashita overcame adversity. He fulfilled his duties with obedience and efficiency, so much so that in 1937, he was promoted to Lieutenant General, one of the most prominent ranks in the army. In the meantime, to temper his temperament, he embraced Zen Buddhism, aiming to calm his mind and focus on his new ambitions. He never abandoned his desire to influence politics, as he also tried to persuade Japanese leaders, who were at war with China at that time, to declare peace and end the conflict. Although ignored, this showed that Yamashita had learned the importance of not getting involved in war conflicts for pleasure, but only when there were real opportunities to succeed. The comeback of our protagonist would come after the start of World War II, when he was chosen to lead the 25th Division of the Army, stationed in French Indochina. The unit was preparing to attack Malaya, a territory covering the current countries of Malaysia and Singapore. The goal of the operation was to oust the British forces in the region, using it as a coordination center for their maneuvers in Asia. Although the Japanese were outnumbered, with only 70,000 men, against the 140,000 British soldiers, Yamashita understood that the key to success lay in a swift and decisive attack, dismantling enemy defenses quickly so they wouldn't have time to react. The Japanese commander's strategy turned out to be an overwhelming success, culminating in the massive surrender of 80,000 British soldiers and the capture of a total of 130,000 Allied prisoners. Let's hear the testimony of a survivor of the invasion of Singapore describing those hours. Singapore 父女跟小孩子通通回家 Upon learning of this astonishing setback, Winston Churchill described it as the worst disaster he had witnessed in his entire life. This feat earned Yamashita the nickname Tiger of Malaya, the moniker by which he would become known far and wide. However, it was during this period that our protagonist showed his darker side. One of the reasons he would be feared and despised by the Allies is the two massacres we will discuss next. One of them took place at Alexandria Hospital in Singapore, where British soldiers were recovering from their injuries. The Japanese entered the facility and, armed with bayonets, mercilessly attacked patients, doctors, and nurses. The wounded were locked in poorly ventilated rooms without water or food, where they had to spend the rest of the night. By dawn, most of them had died due to the terrible conditions of captivity. A few days later, a massacre against anti-Japanese individuals erupted, referring to Singaporeans of Chinese descent and anyone resisting the Japanese occupation. Over three weeks, thousands of men, women, and children were killed in shootings not directly ordered by Yamashita but by his subordinates. Although it is difficult to determine the exact number of victims, experts estimate it ranges between 25,000 and 50,000. The episode is known as the Suk Ching Massacre and is remembered as one of the greatest war crimes of World War II. Yamashita's role in these killings is highly controversial. Some say the slaughter was not his fault and his officers gave the orders without his knowledge. 
It is said that when he learned of the Alexandria Hospital Massacre, the commander personally visited survivors to apologize on behalf of the army. Of course, none of this could bring back what the victims and their families had lost. Next, we will see a segment from a film that recreates the Suk Ching Massacre. Around 1944, the Japanese Empire assigned Tomoyuki Yamashita the command of around 260,000 soldiers stationed in the Philippines. The Axis was at its worst moment since the beginning of the conflict, and the Allies were advancing strongly in all theaters of war. Yamashita's mission was to defend his position to the death and not yield an inch of ground to the enemies. In reality, the battle was already lost before it began because the Americans had already come too close to the city of Manila, the capital of the country. The commander decided that it made no sense to sacrifice thousands of men in a battle whose outcome was already predetermined, so he ordered a retreat. For Yamashita, it was preferable to evacuate the city, ensure the safety of the troops, reorganize, and then attack the Americans when they least expected it. Their plan was sound, but the Tiger of Malaya did not anticipate that he would be disobeyed by one of his own subordinates. The rebel was Sanji Iwabuchi, an admiral of the Imperial Navy, who had his own ideas about how to face the Americans. For Iwabuchi, abandoning Manila was a disgrace, so it was preferable to stay in the city and fight a suicidal battle in defense of Japanese honor. The admiral had the support of 17,000 army soldiers, who stood by his side until the bitter end. The clash between the Japanese and Uncle Sam's troops occurred between February 3rd and March 3rd, 1945, and it was a catastrophe for the people of Manila. Thur City was completely devastated, with its buildings reduced to rubble. Tanks and artillery claimed most of the infrastructure, as well as tens of thousands of lives. However, the casualties were not only the result of the actions of the Americans. On the contrary, it was the Japanese themselves who, seeing they were defeated, took it out on the civilian population. Women were tortured and raped, and men were executed in horrifying ways. During those terrible days, cruelty knew no bounds with shootings, disembowelments, and beheadings. Finally, Admiral Sanji Iwabuchi accepted that there were no more reasons to keep fighting and shot himself in the head. The Japanese forces surrendered shortly after, leaving Manila in the hands of the Allies. In the final moments of the war, Yamashita remained in northern Philippines, leading a small army of 50,000 men. Surprisingly, he managed to withstand the assaults of his enemies until September 2, 1945, two weeks after Japan's official surrender. However, he could no longer hold out any longer. His country was defeated, and his troops were starving due to a lack of resources. He had no choice but to surrender to the Allies, and so he did. Between October and December of that same year, Yamashita was tried by an American military tribunal, which assessed his role in the war crimes committed by the Japanese in the Philippines. Third defense lawyers for the Tiger of Malaya argued that it was impossible for an officer to be aware of everything his men were doing. Being the commander of such a large army, it was inevitable that some soldiers would commit crimes and go unnoticed. However, the prosecutors claimed that Yamashita was responsible for the good conduct of the army and had to ensure that it did not engage in war crimes. Below, we will see a segment of the trial where Yamashita is seated while a lawyer describes his offenses. According to the evidence, Approximately 60,000 unarmed men, women, and children were killed in the Philippine Islands by men under your command. While the Manila Massacre was not ordered by our protagonist, but by a rebellious admiral, it was also true that massacres had occurred under Yamashita's supervision. 
His major mistake had been allowing his troops to be undisciplined and to commit murder, rape, and looting without fearing the possibility of punishment. Thus, the ultimate responsibility for the crimes fell on the highest ranking officer, which was him, leading to a death sentence. On February 23, 1946, Yamashita was sent to the gallows at Los Banos prison in the Philippines. After climbing the 13 steps of the scaffold, the Tiger of Malaya uttered his last words. As I said before the Supreme Court in Manila, I did my best within my capabilities, so when I'm dead and meet the gods I will not feel shame. I know the Americans judged me with fair and tolerant criteria. During the investigation, I was always treated well. The officers were kind and always took care of me. Even now, facing my death, I will not forget everything they did for me. I do not blame my executioners, and I pray that the gods bless them. Today, Yamashita remains one of the most controversial generals of World War II. Some see him as a brilliant military leader, whose legacy was tarnished by the crimes of his subordinates, while others view him as a monster in the service of the Japanese Empire. We've reached the end of the video and we want to ask you, what is your opinion about Tomoyuki Yamashita? Leave your response in the comments below and don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more military events that left their mark on history.